Welcome to Token Topics. We're going to dive more into the world of XDC. We're going to see what's going on with some of the latest developments, news, and information. Real world assets has been a thing on the XDC network before it became a thing. We're going to hear words from Billy Siebel on asset tokenization on the XDC network and reducing the trade gap. You're definitely not going to want to miss that. It's a great clip. Also, what are dependents and what does this mean for the XCC network? We're going to dive into some information from a co-founder. Also, we're going to learn more on what actually drives up the value of these assets. We're hearing a lot of great news about tokenization, but what is actually going to drive up the value instead of hearing all this great news? We're going to dive into a couple articles to explain that more. So if you're an XCC fan, you're not going to want to miss this video. Please do hit the like, share, and subscribe so you can stay up to date with future content. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. The time is now to keep your valuable crypto assets safe and off the exchanges. Through Token Topics affiliate links, you receive an incredible discount. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. If you buy the one wallet, it's $30 off. If you get the two package deal, that's a whopping $99 off the original price. It's an incredible deal. The links are in the description. Let's check out this post on X from the XCC community, and then we're going to hear from Billy Seabell. So recently, new real-world asset crypto projects have been popping up to try to capitalize on a hot narrative, RWA. There's one problem, that they are a few years behind XCC. For more than five years, the Zinfins XCC network has been redefining and liquefying the trade finance space through the tokenization of real-world assets. So as I mentioned earlier, we're uh, the XCC network are primarily here to liquefy trade finance assets. And we're really doing this by trying to address and close what's called the trade finance gap. So if we take a look at really what trade finance is, trade finance is the flow of goods across the globe. And this is often uh, something that, or it's the financing, sorry, it's financing of goods uh, and the flow of those goods across the globe. And uh, this is most often done in the form of invoice financing. And it involves bank and non-bank originators. And the trade finance gap, it represents the collective difference between the demand for capital and the supply for capital. And the demand for capital has long been greater than the supply. And it currently actually stands at $2.7 trillion and growing. And this number has been growing for a long time. And if you include micro businesses in that number, you're looking at $5 trillion gap between the, the money that's available and the money that is needed. The tokenization of trade assets creates the opportunity for businesses, large and small, to have access to financing they wouldn't normally have, especially in remote places where these small businesses don't really have any bankable opportunities. It opens up the doors to them, and it also helps small and medium-sized businesses have greater options, even in places where that capital may be available, but it may not actually be at favorable rates for them. How are RWAs then a solution to the trade finance gap? Well, RWAs have opened up new ways to collateralize and otherwise represent traditional assets. By tokenizing a real world asset on chain, its rights of ownership can be held, it can be traded, and now it also becomes collateral for other investment instruments. This opens up the opportunity for off-chain securitization to drive the growth of RWAs. And as I had mentioned before, the uh, $16 trillion estimated figure, as I mentioned, uh, is, is a big part of that. So let's dive in a little bit to securitization. So I mentioned securitization and private credit. They're really uh, the same thing, spoken a little bit differently. But they're the real opportunity as far as we view it for RWAs. So if you look at the definition of securitization, it's the conversion of an asset, especially a loan, 
into marketable securities, typically for the purposes of raising cash by selling them to other investors. So when we look at the trade finance gap, the way to close this is to make cash available to SMEs that don't actually have that available to them. And through the, digitiz through the digit digitization of documentation in tokenizing these assets, we not only create an immutable record, but uh, we also collapse the time to execute. These transactions, we eliminate risk because financing in the world today is around the globe is usually done by a piece of paper. So if you have an electronic bill of lading that you want to use, that's the paper people are financing with. And if I hold that and I hand it to somebody else and they give me money, they hold it. So I can make copies of that in a paper world and I can sell it to many people. And that means many people are actually funding uncollateralized loans. Trade finance assets are the most inflation proof and risk averse assets available. By digitizing this process, we create the opportunity to reduce costs through the process, bringing more competitive loans to SMEs. So in other words, blockchain is going to save lenders billions and billions of dollars because they're going to have more efficient systems in order to make their loans. And that's going to trickle down to consumers. And it's going to allow us to have less expensive loans. And as we know, we're dealing with quite an inflationary period now. And this is something that can actually help resolve that. So at the core of the foundation support and development of the XCC network is the work we've done to bring tokenization to the network. The journey started three years ago when we launched our smart contracts tokenization platform. And with this, we used it to actually do the first on-chain transaction for trade finance by taking a handful of invoices from a number of different SMEs and financing them on-chain. And that was in 2021, September of 2021. All this work today has led us to the launch of a U.S. Treasury token called USTY in August of 2023, which is the first RWA on the XCC network. And this gives people the opportunity to hold a digital representation of a BlackRock ETF. And this is made possible through the integration of the platform Securitize, and as I had mentioned before, their abilities for KYC and accredited investors. The XCC network is recognized as a premier blockchain in trade finance. It was one of the first and only layer ones to be invited to be a part of the trade finance distribution initiative and also the International Far Fading uh, and Trade Association. That was an excellent clip from Billy Siebel, and it gives us an understanding of real world asset tokenization on the XCC network. Now, he mentioned BlackRock and Securitize. Now, recently, BlackRock announced that they're going to be investing into Securitize. So this is a drop in the bucket what we're seeing. It's only going to be a matter of time before more players enter into this space, a lot of institutional investors. And at that point, a lot of money is going to flood in. Now, somebody might ask, well, why isn't the price like impacted right now? And I'm going to go over an explanation that's going to actually explain how value, how it's going to drive up the price on these assets. All right. So let's go over this article, though. The total value of tokenized U.S. Treasuries hits $1 billion, driven by BlackRock's build surging 400% to $240 million. Franklin Templeton's Franklin On-Chain U.S. Government Money Fund leads with $360.2 million. Ondu Finance holds 38% of build supply, rising Treasury yields from 1.69% to 4.22% since March of 2022. Fuel demand, this growth sparks interest in U.S. Treasuries and tokenized T-bills. With all this tokenization talk, I get asked, why are we not seeing the price of these assets going up? What's really going to drive up the price of these assets? All this great news is awesome, but when are we actually going to see the value increase? So how tokenization will impact the value of digital assets and cryptocurrencies? This is a topic that's not really discussed enough. Tokenization has the potential to sig significantly impact and drive up the value of digital assets in the crypto market in several ways. Increased liquidity. 
Tokenization can fractionalize ownership of assets, allowing investors to buy and sell smaller portions of assets. This increased liquidity can attract more investors to the market, potentially driving up demand and prices. Accessibility. Tokenization can make traditional illiquid assets, such as real estate, fine art, accessible to a wider range of investors. This increased accessibility could lead to greater demand for the assets, potentially driving up their value. Also diversification. Tokenization allows for the creation of tokens representing various types of assets from real estate to stocks, commodities. Investors can diversify their portfolios more easily by holding tokens representing different asset classes, potentially reducing risk and increasing overall value. There's also efficiency. Tokenization can streamline processes such as trading, settlement, ownership, transfer, reducing costs and increasing efficiency. This improved efficiency could attract more investors to the market and contribute to overall growth and value. Global market access. Tokenization can facilitate access to global markets by removing geographical barriers. Investors from anywhere in the world can buy and sell tokenized assets, potentially increasing demand and driving up prices. We also have regulatory compliance. So properly regulated tokenization platforms can attract institutional investors who may have been hesitant to enter the crypto market due to regulatory concerns. The influx of institutional capital could contribute to increased demand and higher valuations. Also innovation, tokenization opens up possibilities for new types of assets and investment structures that were not feasible before. This innovation could attract more investors to the market and drive up the value of digital assets. However, it's important to note that the impact of tokenization on the value of digital assets in the crypto market will depend on various factors, including regulatory developments, investor sentiment, technological advancements, and market dynamics. So it needs to attract, I just want to stop right there, it needs to attract big investors to come in. What we're seeing right now is a drop in the bucket. We need increased liquidity. We need more people involved. And during that process, more people are going to hold assets. So while tokenization holds promises for increasing the value of digital assets, it also presents risks and challenges that need to be clarified and navigated. So there you have that. Now, this is an excellent article from Daniel, or Daniel Radwanski. I'm sorry, Daniel Radwanski. So why are institutional players good for the tokenization market? So the strategic digitalization of assets spearheaded by institutional adoption is transforming the landscape of asset management and investment strategies. Tokenization technologies and blockchain integration are breaking down traditional barriers, allowing new foundations to be laid, how assets are managed, traded, and held. Financial institutions are spearheading this revolution, embracing tokenization technologies as a comprehensive strategy to navigate the complexities inherent in digital assets. The commitment to change and innovation is an indicative of unique capabilities that blockchain technology offers, enhancing transparency, efficiency, and accessibility across financial services. The critical role of digital currencies and tokenized assets is its transformation. In this transformation cannot be overstated. With institutional capital moving into digital forms, the liquidity pool within a tokenization ecosystem is poised for expansion right there. That is big right there. The increased liquidity, increased expansion. The introduction of central bank digital currencies and other stable coins into this mix promises to accelerate this transition by bridging the divide between traditional financial systems and the burgoing world of digital assets. These innovations are poised to streamline how uh, the flow of capital, enhancing efficiency and further boosting liquidity in tokenized markets. So, Again, crawl, walk, run. We've heard that from like Brad Garlinghouse and a lot of other people in this space. You know, this is a drop in the bucket. We're going to get there and we're going to hit a, a, a turning point where we're going to see a lot of these big enterprise businesses getting involved and we're going to see a big rise in these assets in a short period of time. We will get to that point, I believe. What is D-PIN? Let's check out this article from Ritesh Kakad. He's one of the co-founders of the XDC network. What are decentralized physical infrastructure networks? 
Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks, or DPIN, is a network where people connect directly with each other peer-to-peer -to, -peer to share and use hardware like computers, energy grid, resources, and storage through an open and decentralized marketplace, meaning there's no central authority controlling everything. So DPINs use public blockchain technology like XCC Network to manage physical devices like computers, storage, and energy sources in a way that's open and decentralized. This means that instead of one central authority controlling everything, the power is spread across a large network. The rising need for decentralized physical infrastructure networks or depends as the demand for artificial intelligence and other technologies grow, the risks of depending on centralized companies for computing and storing resources become clearer. For example, consider the potential impact of the chip industry. If supply from Taiwan were disrupted, Taiwan produces 92% of the world's advanced semiconductors, which are crucial for modern technology. This situation shows how centralized systems can be vulnerable. Decentralized physical infrastructure networks, or DPINs, offer a solution by providing a decentralized alternative. They, they reduce the risk of single points of failure, enhance security and privacy, offer cost-efficient solutions, and promote innovation and competition. The resilience also ensures that resources are always available, making them essential in reducing the risk of centralized control. Now let's understand how they operate. So DPINs work through three main components, the off-chain network, blockchain technology, and specific protocols. Off-chain network. The off-chain network of a DPIN consists of its user and service providers, users who need services like GPU computing power, wireless connectivity, or data storage, can purchase these resources from a marketplace or service providers. Blockchain. The blockchain, like XCC network, acts as a bridge between end users and service providers. It functions as a public ledger managing payments, escrow contracts, and ensuring all transactions are accurately processed and recorded. Transactions between users and providers are time stamped and securely logged on the blockchain. So protocols. The protocols are a set of rules that define how DPIN operates. These rules cover various aspects, including security measures, the availability of native crypto tokens, criteria for service provider eligibility, and interaction between users and providers. By combining these elements, DPINs provide a decentralized and secure infrastructure for physical resources, empowering users with more accessible and reliable services. Now, DPINs in the XCC network the XCC network is a prime example of how decentralized physical infrastructure networks work. It uses masternodes, which are servers run by community members. These masternodes provide essential resources like computing power and connectivity, making the XCC network a decentralized public blockchain. In return for their contribution, masternode holders earn XCC tokens as rewards. This setup demonstrates the strength of DPINs, where each participant helps build a secure and robust blockchain network. XCC network ecosystem and decentralized physical infrastructure networks host platforms like StoreX, Go Plugin, which demonstrate the advantages of DPINs. If you'd like to read through the rest of this, the link is in the description. All right, this is exciting for XDC fans. Get ready for Dubai. If you remember last year, the On XDC conference was held in Austin, Texas, and they just uh, posted this on X. After all the incredible feedback from our Austin conference last year, get ready because this year's event is heading to Dubai. Stay tuned for updates and details. So this is something to definitely watch. Let's go over this excellent post from Amelia Jones so we have an understanding of subswaps and XDC Zero. So subswap is connecting chains and powering free flow of cross-chain assets. Subswap is a revolutionary token cross-chain dApp based on XDC0, which we'll get to in just a moment. It's designed to integrate token interoperability across multiple subnets and the mainnet. It's not just about token swaps on the mainnet. It's about creating a fluid interconnected blockchain ecosystem. But first, what's XDC0? XDC0 is a sophisticated cross-chain communication and data transfer system comprising endpoint contracts, a relayer, and checkpoint contracts. It facilitates seamless, secure, and efficient cross-chain integrations, laying the groundwork for applications like SubSwap. SubSwap unveiled, built on a robust framework of XCC0, SubSwap 
is set to transform how we transfer and swap assets across the chains. Its components include subswaps, contracts for assets locking, minting, and swapping, all underpinned by trusted XDC0 infrastructure. Now, this is important, so why it matters? Subswap and XDC0 together herald a new era of blockchain interoperability, enhancing liquidity, market efficiency, and security, whether it's cross-chain asset transfer swapping, these platforms are setting new standards for blockchain functionality and user experience. And as you can see here, you can experience it yourself. I'm going to put the link in this in the description. Connecting subswap, connecting chains, empowering free flow of cross-chain assets. Check it out. If you're holding a good amount of XDC, why not put it to work to create some passive income? And Globions, they've been around for a while, so they've proven themselves. So introducing 24-hour staking on Globions. Keep your XDC staking short and sweet, and you'll always have quick access when you need it. Earn an easy 5.99% uh, estimated APR when you hop into the 24-hour XDC staking pool on Globions, but it gets better. Expecting the next bull run soon? No worries. No cooldown period means no waiting for funds when your 24-hour term ends. Check out the longer terms here. 30 days at 9% APY, 90 days at 9.25% APY, 180 days, 9.49, and you have 365 a full year at 9.99, pretty much 10% APY. Now, imagine if that was sitting in a bank or whatever. That is definitely not bad at all. And if you are wanting to learn more about Globions, I totally recommend this YouTube channel that you check them out. Blockchain Monkeys. I'm going to put the link to his channel in the description. Go ahead, subscribe to him. He just recently put out a Globions video, so that's pretty convenient. So dive in, soak up some information. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider subscribing so you could stay up to date. And do hit the like because it helps the algorithm so more people can learn about the XTC network to be invested. So it helps us all. Thank you.